Mike, you're uh, the voice of New Zealand commentary as far as the fight game goes. You're also one of the uh, most travelled guys when it comes to fighting in big fights all around the world. And you've just come back from Fight Island. I have. <laughs> I have. We've come back from what was basically four weeks in isolation. Um, you know, obviously a tremendous experience. Probably experience uh, beyond just the fight itself. Um, because obviously Israel's fight was successful, Brad had a great fight, but there's mixed feelings when you've got, uh, you know, Shane and, Shane and Kai who didn't come off with the wins. But uh, where the big steps forward were for City Kickboxing in particular were just the way that that team gelled, they came together through adversity, they, they, they formed their own bubble uh, through the lockdown period, didn't let anything get in the way. And one of the things that was marked uh, in terms of the comments from other fighters, from other trainers, from other journalists, was the, the closeness of, of the city kickboxing team, which is really a representative of, of our Kiwi culture in many ways. You know, it's, it's a different ethos, it's a different environment, and uh, we were able to carry that uh, over the air, and, and it came off really well. And I've, I've said before in other interviews, you could hear our team screaming and yelling with each fighter clearly across that silent, you know, COVID limited stadium. You could hear the Kiwis in full voice and, and that was something that was uh, very memorable. Mike, before COVID, there was a, a game plan in place that was working perfectly. It all got disrupted with that. I'm talking about the lead in times to fights and all this sort of stuff. Um, the lockdown come and everybody got together and stayed here in the gym. Do you, do you see a difference after that? We're not back to that, um, what we used to do before sort of a thing, but do you see something different because of that staying together and living together? I think the mark of, of uh, City Kip Goxing and the coaching team and the team in general, it's a team that looks constantly for ways we can advance, we can evolve, we can improve. And going into a, a lockdown kind of scenario or a marae kind of scenario where the guys are in the gym, they basically uh, sleep, train, eat, sleep, train, eat, repeat, sleep, train, eat, repeat. And that kind of environment is ideal from a, from a fighting perspective. Um, without outside influences. So that's something that we discovered and, so, and, a, and a, a team camaraderie and a team spirit that you want to replicate in the, in the future, you know, capture that lightning in a bottle again. Um, so, so that's a learning that, that we've got from that. And look, it's, it's not uncommon. You think about, uh, you know, great boxing camps like Big Bear, um, where, you know, uh, where uh, the top fighters go to seclude themselves from the rest of the world. So, you know, look, it's, it's uh, you know, repolishing with a CKB theme on something that's been done before. I think that's something we'll probably look to introduce, uh, at, you know, in our future camps. Well, there's also a new fighter that we're, everybody in New Zealand has been excited about for a long time, and, you, and uh, you've called his fights on the king in the ring. He's, he's a fighter that everybody is looking forward to stepping up on the big stage, Carlos Allberg. Um, tell us your thoughts about the fight coming up. Look, I, I think the female viewership of USC is about to go up exponentially. Uh, he doesn't like uh, the fight moniker ladies night, but uh, look, he, if there's a man who just wakes up in the morning with a radiant glow, um, exuding uh, sex appeal and uh, what we've come to term ooze juice, it's Carlos Holberg. Tremendous athlete, uh, prime physical specimen, uh, still growing and still learning in terms of his skill set, um, but he's got such a, a, a superb athletic foundation that uh, he will be very, very dangerous. And I've compared him a little bit to Francis Ngannou before. Heavy handed, still a little bit rough and a little bit raw, even though he's been training for obviously a period now. Um, you know, two time King in the Ring winner as well. Um, but he's only going to get better, so that's what's exciting. So you've got a guy who's really, 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 really good looking, um, who can fight, you know, and a hell of a nice guy. So I spent lockdown with him uh, in terms of quarantine when we came back to New Zealand. So uh, kicks incredibly hard, punches hard, um, you know, physically strong, 
just just so much uh, going for him a, as an athlete and just out of sheer raw potential. Um, plus the fact that he's in um, in a camp with uh, with uh, you know five other UFC fighters um, with a proven program with a whole bunch of other international guys. So that's a, an ideal setting for him to move into that UFC Challenger series and 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 hopefully we see him. Uh, you know we we expect him to perform well there with a devastating knockout or two and make his way into the, the UFC roster. Hey, thanks for talking to us, Mike. It's uh, always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, on the looks department, you and you and him, how, how do you judge yourself? Uh, yeah, no, uh, Carlos has got a little way to go before he gets the old <laughs> silver fox look. But, uh, yeah, what do you want? You want, like, youth and exuberance or, or age, wisdom and a little bit of experience? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Okay, cheers, buddy. Hey, I better run. I'm gonna be late. Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's all good. Here you go. Hey, hey, thanks for your time. No, 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 no worries, mate. Cheers.